Amplitronic. Listen to the difference. Hi, I'm Chris from Amplitronic, and I'm going to walk you through how to commission an induction loop system using Loopworks Measure and an R1 receiver plugged in to your iOS device. The first thing you need to do is log into your Loopworks account on your PC and click in to the Measure tab. We're going to set up the project from within the Loopworks portal, but you can do this on the app if preferred. The first thing you need to do is set up a new client. Click on the button and you can enter as much or as little information as you want. Next, we need to add a new project. This is required as we need to define somewhere that the app can save the commissioning test results to. Give the project a name and make sure you've selected the client that you just set up. You can fill in more reference details if you'd like or just click add. You'll then see that project appear in the project window that we're looking at. Click into it and from there the next thing we need to do is set up a new system. There should be a system for each room or area that you need to commission. As we're doing a room we need the system type set to area. If you were doing a, a counter loop you'd choose service point there instead. Click into the system we've just defined and now we need to set up some test points. This is where we're going to save commissioning results throughout the room. For an area system, we need at least four test points to find in order to get a verdict from the Loopworks app. As it's a meeting room, people are only going to be using the loops in a seated position, so we're going to use a 1.2 meter listening height for each test point. You can use the X, Y coordinates to define the positions, give them more meaningful names, or just use letters or numbers that you can mark up on a drawing later. I'm going to add one more test point here in the corridor, which I'm going to use to measure overspill. This is as we want to see how much of the loop signal is measurable outside the room. Once those test points are set up, that's the project ready to commission. Make sure that you've logged into the app and it's synchronized before going to site in case you don't have a data connection. So when we're in the app, you need to go to settings, change user and make sure you're logged in. After that, click on the project system selection at the top of the app and make sure you select the project and system defined. You can click synchronize here if you can't see them and that is also where you would define a new one. Press start test in the bottom left, choose new commissioning test and give it a name. You can do multiple commissioning tests for the same system, such as if you're doing a yearly retest. Give the session a name and press OK and that will load up an eight step commissioning test in the app. You'll see the four test points available at the bottom that we defined earlier. The first test is background noise for which the amplifier needs to be turned off. We're looking for a result of below minus 32 dB in each area. So move to each test point, select the test point at the bottom of the screen, make sure the app is held in an upright position so that you can see the save icon rather than a, a tilt warning. Press save and press OK and that will store the result. Once you've done all four test points, it's a good idea to hit the results button at the bottom and make sure that we've successfully achieved a pass verdict. For that test. Click the next arrow or swipe across to move on to step two, field strength, and turn on the amplifier. We'll wait a few seconds for that to start up. We're using a D-series amplifier, so we're going to control this via the web browser on the phone as we've got it connected to a wireless network. If you're using a standard analog amplifier, then you'll just use the controls on the front and rear of the amplifier to set it up. So now that the amplifier is online, we can go to the web browser and in the config page, we can choose one of the inbuilt test signals. Again, if you're not using a D-series amplifier, you can just use a signal generator or an MP3 player to get these tones into the amplifier. 
So we want to use a combination tone for field strength measurement. And we're looking for values between plus three and minus three dB at each position. Again, move to each position, select the test point, hold the app upright and press save. The combination tone alternates between pink noise and a one kilohertz sine wave. We want to take the reading generated by the one kilohertz sine wave, at which point you'll see the meter increase by about six decibels. Loopworks uses a peak hold meter, so we don't need to hit save just at the right time. As long as you've captured one of those peaks, it will retain that, that value. Make sure you've done a test in all four positions and next, we need to move along to frequency response. For frequency response, we need to use a pink noise signal. So select that on your signal generator or on the D-series amplifier and go back to the Loopworks app. We'll see a third octave view of the frequency response of the induction loop system. There was a bit of a slope there where we were losing some high frequencies due to the metal construction of the room. So we're going to turn up the MLC control on the amplifier, which corrects for some of this frequency loss. We've not added quite enough here, so I'm going to turn it up to one decibel per octave and see if that improves things. Switch back to the Loopworks app and you can see that that started to flatten off the frequency response. We've got a pass there, so we'll hit save and move on to the next test point. Select test point B, and in this position we actually seem to have more frequency loss. Perhaps there's a wider loop or more metal in the floor at this position. If we increase the metal loss correction to 1.5 dB per octave, that's corrected the frequency slope that we had in test point B. But as we've made some adjustments, we now need to go back to test point A and take another reading. You can see this has actually gone too far and we've now got the low frequency dropping out of standard. So we can't take a, take a result in, in test point A anymore. In this instance, I'm going to use the custom MLC within the D-series amplifier that allows us to change the center point of the slope and also separately define the high frequency and low frequency slope so we get a bit more control. You can see we've really flattened off the high frequencies quite nicely now, but we've still got a bit too much of the low end. If I adjust the low frequency slope, a small amount, but not as much as the high frequencies, that should start to flatten out quite nicely. You can see that's a much better result than we could achieve with the standard MLC control. Test point B is still slightly worse, but it's now moving just between the edge of a pass and a qualified pass. We've managed to get that to pass in this instance, but it's not the end of the world if one or two areas hit a qualified pass. The other two test points that we're, we're checking are both passing absolutely fine. So we're happy with the frequency response and we've moved on to step four. Steps four and five are about a live input signal. So we need to turn off the test tones and we need to use a microphone, or you can use a reference speech track or some music in order to do these stages. First off, we need to have a listen to the system and make sure that it sounds good. We're looking for clarity and intelligibility here. Test one, two. You can see that lit up the LEDs on the amplifier and also that it was very clear and intelligible. Once we've answered those questions, we need to check the levels. One, two. One, two. One, two. You only need to take a live signal measurement in one of the test points in order to pass the system. We've got a qualified pass here as the strength is a little low. So let's see at the other test points. One, two. One, two. Saving these qualified passes won't affect the verdict, as long as we can achieve a pass at one position. 
One, two. One, two. You can see there we've achieved a pass in test point C. So that means that the live signal will pass. This is different to steps one to three, where you need to pass in one, all sections two. in order one, to achieve two. an overall pass verdict. The next stage is system noise. So we can turn off the microphone. We need to make sure this is muted or unplugged in order to measure system noise. This step is very similar to background noise, but we're making sure that the setup of the amplifier hasn't added a lot of hum or buzz into the system. Similarly to live signal, we only need to get a result in one of the test points in order for this to pass. But I'm going to take it in all four just to make sure. We're looking for similar results to background noise as well. And we've got a pass in all four test points. So we're going to move on to step seven, which is overspill. You don't need to complete this step if you're not concerned about overspill. So you can just skip straight through it. But in this instance, we want to make sure there's not too much signal going outside the room. So I've turned my combination test signal back on and I'm going to go and take a reading at approximately one meter outside the room. We're ideally looking for a result of minus 40 decibels or below, as this is almost inaudible to a hearing aid user and gives us a huge amount of signal to noise ratio if there's another induction loop out in that room. Again, you only need to take one test point for overspill if you decide that you are testing it. Hit save and move on to step eight. This is all about accessibility. We need to make sure that the staff can operate the system. There's a routine maintenance system in place and that there's signage indicating that a loop system is present and it's easy to know where to use it. Press stop and you'll see a summary of your results. If there's any failing, go back into the test and address these while on site. We've logged back into the Loopworks portal and clicked into measure once we've got back to the office. If you click into the meeting rooms project that we set up earlier, you'll now see that there's a test session or more saved. The demo session is the one that we completed on the app and you can see it's got a verdict now. If we click into that, we can see all of the results from the test that we did on site. This gives you a good overall summary of whether we got a pass, qualified pass or fail in each test point and also gives us an overall verdict. If you want to see more detail, click into any one of the results and you'll see the meter from the app screen as well as all the exact decibel verdicts. Once we're happy that we're not going to make any changes to this, click review and edit. This locks it from making any further measurements on the app but we can still make basic adjustments here, like removing test points. We don't need to do that, so we're going to issue the report. That then means that we can print a final report, which can be downloaded as a PDF or printed to submit to your client on handover of the system. This has a front page that gives you an overall verdict, as well as multiple pages below depending on how many test points you've you've used um, to give the exact results for each position of each test. We can download that as a PDF, save it locally and then we can send that to our customer. So hopefully that's given you a really good overview of how we can commission a system using the Loopworks tools. There are several other test procedures built into the app for things such as quick tests or metal loss testing on site. If you've got any questions or want any further advice on using the Loopworks platform, please contact us via telephone, email, live chat, or by using the support ticket system on the Loopworks portal. Thank you for watching. Amplitronic. Listen to the difference.